loose noodle being like, I can't get a pull up. <laughs> That's aggressive. Hello. All right. Let's hear that cold start on that diesel. 30 degrees this morning. Woo! No problem. <laughs> and now it's 56. Say the word. <laughs> Some you I, I you said like, it. You, I, saw, you said espresso under, to her. I was under pressure in there. <laughs> and then a gift for a friend who's sick. It smells good. Yeah, it smells good. The whole place smells amazing. productive morning <laughs> working at our mobile coffee up in Austin Mozart our coffee oh, don't make up words coffee office do not make up words <laughs> what were you working on over there in secret in secret yeah um, I was working on a new freebie how to get your first pull-up or how to get better at pull-ups or you can even use it if you're if you're trying to get stronger for muscle-ups but it's, it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be like a little program you can follow. Like the idea is like finishers. So like if you're already going to a gym or you're already doing some digital barbell workouts, every um, if you're doing digital barbell, you don't have to worry about it because you're already you're doing the right thing. But if you're doing other things other than digital barbell, you need this because you're not probably not doing the right pulling exercises yeah. to get your back strengthening exercises stronger. stronger. So there's three workouts a week. One of them is always practicing your pull-ups. Like, you know, usually if you're not quite getting the pull-up yet, it'd be like using a band or something like that. But, and then you pick two out of like the list to, to just mix around and do every week after your workout. But it's like almost 2.30 now. We are just now headed home. We haven't had lunch. We haven't worked out. So let's go get after this. Right. People ask us all the time how we get fired up and motivated to train. Actually, nobody ever asked us that. But today we're watching how to winterize your Airstream as we work out. <laughs>
All right, it's almost time to work out. I'm having a pre-workout snack, a banana, and some Icelandic yogurt. Tell me uh, what you're calculating over there. I'm chilling. Sometimes I feel like we, we spend a lot on our grocery budget, but then I think it's just like unrealistic expectations of like, oh, I feel like we should spend this. Like, I don't even have any information about what we should spend. Like, I'm just like a number in my head. Like, I wanna spend this much money on groceries, but the cost of you know groceries today has gone up. Plus two people plus we eat literally like a hundred percent of the food that we eat is from the grocery store. We like this month we did not go out to a restaurant. We went to coffee shops to have a latte. So hundred percent of the food we eat is from the grocery store. So having a realistic expectation of what that actually costs to eat healthy. If I just say I, w I wish we spent twelve hundred dollars on groceries. That might not be a real realistic mm -hmm. if we're feeding two people and eating a hundred percent of that food from the grocery store for 31 days in a row. Yeah. 1550 for the month, $25 a day. Mm -hmm. That's we're doing four meals a day because we do three full meals plus several snacks. Uh-huh. 625 a meal. That that, that sounds higher. Though. Well I am I including think. like if we go and purchase like any like purchase that's made at like twin liquors or that's included in mm -hmm. this budget. It's ingestible substance. <laughs> Would you don't take out like paper towels, no. toothpaste. Alright, so that's skewing that's the true. Meal. Laundry detergent. That's true. It's not. It's that's not. That's not realistic per meal. Yeah. This is just what we spent at the grocery store. So I mean, that would be a whole nother. I'm not going through the receipts. So I'm. Yeah. Not, I'm not that kind of budgeter. I'm just no. like, here's what we spent at the HEB. <laughs> All right. So Ooh. this is this is going on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, we spent fifteen hundred and fifty dollars last month at the grocery store for two people, without eating out at restaurants. Leave us a comment what the situation is in your family, how much you eat at restaurants, maybe even how much you spend at restaurants per month, if you know, and how many people that's for. Let's just see if we're crazy or not. Who's ready to get their first pull up? Who's ready? But actually, um, I don't think I told you this, but one of our friends on Instagram, Becky sent in a message in a little question box the other day. She said that she is to the point where she can do five strict pull ups now, but she's stuck right there. Okay. And yesterday when we were driving, we were talking about this new freebie that you were putting together about helping people get better at pull ups. Yeah. yeah, so this is not just to get your first pull up. This can be to get better at pull ups. Even if you have pull-ups and you're trying to get muscle-ups. The bottom line is like you have to get stronger yeah. at pull-ups and you have to get stronger in other areas too if you're going to get better at pull-ups. You Pe have to do pull-ups, but there's other things that you can also do. And I don't think a lot of people think about like all the muscles that are involved in being able to do a pull-up. Yeah. And if you strengthen them individually in addition to practicing pull-ups using bands mm -hmm. and all the stuff that's in this sweet program right yeah. here. You're gonna either get your first pull up or break through that plateau of where you're at. And uh, you know, back in the day when I was like, okay, I'm gonna get better at pull ups. And every time I worked out, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do three sets of max pull ups. I feel like that is not something that you want to yeah, it gets boring. do for months and months and months at a time. The idea of this is that you can take these finishers, you can do pull ups every week, and then you can take two more of these finishers and mix them around and work on getting stronger for pull ups by not, but not just like hammering out of like, all right, I'm gonna do one and a half pull ups today. I'm gonna do one and a half pull ups yeah. today, or whatever it is. I think another cool thing is a lot of the muscles that help you get better at pull ups are also muscles that people don't mind seeing yeah. more definition in, in their back, yeah. in their uh, traps, in their <clears throat> biceps, in their shoulders, all that kind of stuff. So well, Blakely's gonna walk us through kind of like what's in this free program. Mm -hmm. Where can people go to get it? Yeah, digitalbarbell.com slash pull up, all one word. All one word. P-U-L-L-U-P. P-U-L-L-U-P? Yep. All right, we'll also put a link for it in the uh, description of this episode too. So grab a cup of coffee or a pre-workout and let me read you the story of the pull up. There's a story? Oh, the elusive pull up. There's just something about doing them that makes people take a second glance. What a display of back and arm strength, of core stability, 
and hard work. Anyone has the potential to do a pull-up. It just make, may take some dedicated time spent working on them to truly master the pull-up. It's quite an intro, right? I'm impressed. <laughs> All right, let's rock. All right. Okay, so the first thing we want to talk about is your positioning on the bar. We want a hollow body position. We don't want to just be hanging on the bar like this, all like a loose noodle, being like, I can't get a pull up. <laughs> so, I think dead fish works too. Even if you don't have pull ups yet, I want you to start getting your grip on the bar, pulling your toes just in front of you, and hanging here in that hollow body position. If you do digital barbell programming, you do something called a hollow hold or a hollow rock a lot, and it looks like this. This is the position that we want to be in when we're holding onto the bar. Not the wet noodle. Yes. Second thing is your grip. When I say pull up, I mean the overhand grip. When I say chin up, I mean the underhand grip. And a lot of people get a chin up before they get a pull up which is perfectly fine. When you do a chin up, you recruit a little bit more bicep. So this might be an easier grip for you to get your first pull up on. I would definitely mix and match and try both as you're doing them, but you might end up going here first. Ben, can you do a chin up? Okay, and then before we start any of this, the last thing is gonna be, what is a full range of motion pull up? Mm -hmm. So if we're doing a full range of motion pull up, it's a dead hang to a chin over bar. Okay, what are you gonna need to do these finishers in this program? You're gonna need a pull-up bar, obviously. You're gonna need a variety of dumbbells for your strength work. Some gymnastics rings are good. If you don't have those, we can also use a barbell in the rack to do some inverted rows. And then band, if you don't have pull-ups yet, you're gonna need some of these bands of various sizes. What you do with these bands is you connect them, you connect them to the bar, Put your foot in. And the reason you want various sizes is you can combine different strengths. And this gives you some assistance in doing the pull-ups. And then as you progress in strength, you remove some of the, the width thing. Okay, so how do we use the program? There are seven finishers in the program. I want you to try to do three per week. Every week you're gonna do the finisher where you are attempting pull-ups. You're gonna do three, max, three sets of max pull-ups with a band until you are eventually to no bands. And then you're gonna pick two more finishers to do after your workouts that week. That's where you're gonna do your strength building exercises. All right, so how long should somebody do this pull-up program for? That's the good thing, is they can do it as long as they need to. You can be just a beginner where you're just barely able to hang on to the bar, or you can be almost to that first pull-up, or you can have a good set of pull-ups and you're just trying to get stronger. Use it as long as you need it. All right. Well, let's go through some of these finishers so you know what to do. rings here is a way to do some inverted rows inverted rows are a great way to build some pulling strength without doing pull-ups so first I'm going to lower this and place it on the rack the most important thing to do when you are doing inverted rows is when you're, when you're doing the row you want to pull against the bar into the rack. You don't want to pull the bar this way. Don't, don't let these little lips try to support you. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. So on the inverted row, I'm going to get in a horizontal position and pull row, if you will, into the bar. So you see what I mean by pull against the rack. Don't set yourself up, pull this way, this bar will go off the edge and land on you. The way that we can scale this movement, the higher we stand, the easier it is. The more horizontal we are, the more of our body weight we're pulling and the tougher it is. Try those times.
All right, so there you have it. What is the name of this program called? Seven Finishers to get your first pull up. Again, if you can't do pull ups, you can use this to get pull ups. If you're stuck at only doing a couple pull ups, you can use this program to get more pull ups. Probably gonna see some muscle gains in the process also. Completely free, digitalbarbell.com slash pull up, all one word. Now we actually have to work out. You ready? Until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Anxiety, filling up every space, no privacy uh, And silently, it could build and build until you finally see Whoa, it's taking over, damn no closure, moving closer No exposure, I just wanna be a loner So Blakely got me these Vans trainers for Christmas So I've been wearing them for a little over a month now So let me give you a quick little review all in all i really like them i'd say they're just about as comfortable as a lot of flat other shoes like innovates or a nike metcon maybe not as cushioned as something like a reebok nano but they've been completely fine for training you know air squats i'm deadlifting in them uh, today i'm doing barbell rows in them i will say i ran a mile in them on our walking pad over here and immediately got shin splints. So that is one of the reasons that I went out and got a pair of legitimate running shoes, which I did two miles in those new Brooks running shoes yesterday and they felt fantastic. Uh, so yeah, all in all, I like these bands. Um, good for casual too. I think they're a little pricey. I think they're like a hundred dollars. I'm worth it, but that seems a little steep for essentially a casual shoe. I think I got them on Yeah. Yeah. Now, as to how they're going to stand up, I don't know. I'm pretty hard on shoes. They're already they're getting they're getting a little wrinkled. I've already spilled something on the, the right one. It has a dot that hasn't come off. But I still am untying them every time I take them off and put them on. I'm not cramming my foot into them yet, so that's a good sign. A theory. So I, yeah, it's like, all right, so when you start a new diet or a training program, it's exactly like when you buy a brand new pair of shoes. Like you keep them in the box, you keep them clean. You see a speck on them, you clean it off right away. You keep them in the box, but like every time you put them on and off, you untie them. Yeah. You like here, if you like, oh, am I gonna go walk for a walk like in the dirt? I'm gonna change shoes. Yeah. Very careful. You're in the honeymoon stage of getting your new shoes. It's exactly the same. When you start a new nutrition program or a, a new whatever, a diet, you're like, I'm gonna pay attention to all the details. I'm gonna be super careful. I'm super committed to keeping this thing rolling. And then somewhere along the line, with these pairs of shoes, like you are busy one time, you're tired, you use that heel to pull the shoe off or cram your foot in. The first time you like do that, you're like, you take your foot, you your shoe off like this, and then you just let everything else go. Yeah. Like you don't care where you wear them. Like <laughs> you don't care if you like walk in them like this without tying them. Like you just, they're done. Yeah. And that's what, the, that's what the comparison is. It's like you mess up one time, you have that office donut when you didn't really feel like you should have. And then it's like all over yeah. us. That's it. It's all the diet. pizza buffet from here on out. <laughs> transparency I just kind of tweaked my back on my last set of uh, bent over rows I forgot that when I went to bed last night my back was feeling a little bit achy started the workout wasn't thinking anything about it uh, actually increased my reps over last week on my first two sets and as I got to the eighth rep on my third set I actually remember during the mid rep I was like I forgot my back was feeling a little bit achy but I pushed it went on to rep 9 and then I'll rep 10 felt a little bit of a zap on the left side of my low back. I can already kind of feel those muscles in my low back and pelvis kind of seizing up. So it's all right. I know I'll come back from it. I'm just gonna hop on the treadmill, get some steps in, let it loosen up and go from there. Setbacks are just part of it, guys. 